Ah, you arrived. Greetings and welcome to this Shadow Star Star Trek Online visual review. I am Rashad, also known as the Renegade by some. And it is my pleasure today to begin these five next visual reviews talking about the five newly acquired vessels from the as you and they call it the mirror universe <laughs> we get to start off with my personal favorite so no matter who you fly with federation klingon romulan or dominion i guess our alliance should just say get comfortable the replicators are at your disposal and shall we begin with the adamant class now suffice to say should you acquire this vessel hmm there are a few customization options you get but you don't actually gain access to every customization option not like you would have done with the mirror then the mirror with the legendary Forgive me, but then again, the legendary doesn't give you access to the mirror. With that being noted, as far as I'm aware, the legendary doesn't give you access to the mirror. You gain access to these main templates, the adamant. Your universe is adamant. The defiant as that is a standard visual. The Gallant, including the Gallant Refit, which is actually the one you're seeing right now. The Vigilant and the Vigilant Refit. Also, finally, the Defiant Mirror. If you wish to gain access to the Apollo, the Reliant, the Valiant, sorry, and the Defiant with its nose art, you need either the Legendary to give you all three, or to acquire the Valiant and the Cipollo. That being said, there are a few things I like to talk about here while we can. Along with these customization options, I mean. The first distinctive part is, you may have noticed, with the fact the adamant and the mirror adamant have different hole types, you do have access to the legendary holes, regardless. You'll gain the Defiant, the Galaxy, whoops, the Intrepid, the NX, the NX Refit, the Sovereign, the Sovereign Refit and any of the other whole types including the new Type 7A as you saw standardly equipped to the mirror. Personally, I do like the look of the Defiant on this ship but I am also quite a fan of the Type 7A on this vessel. I do believe it is a vast improvement over the original Type 7. Further notes to make here is something I want to specifically speak about with the Defiant Mirror. I'm very happy to see from the cryptic shipyards that they have been wise enough to realize that yes, the Mirror Universe and the Terran Empire of the Mirror Universe, should I say, fouled. They fell. A Kardashian Klingon alliance essentially overthrew them in some respects I'm not sure of the full history but it makes sense that coming back to this period our now present era and with the revival of the Seven Empire they would do some things different a slightly different emblem and instead of using yellow they've used red um, 
They might want, Cryptic might want to understand why red wasn't actually originally used since it was originally going to be the colour of the Terran Empire. But then, I guess lighting in a CGI universe can argue against how yellow doesn't really, well, yellow pops in space, but red tends to turn black in the darkness. Still, I think it's a very fitting touch to done with this Defiant, and I could see that should future Defiance have been made in the Mirror Universe, this approach to have been taken. Even though the Defiant of the Mirror Universe actually looks like this, just without the badging. Yeah. Now I'll, I'll talk about it here, just because it's going to be hard to do in the next section. I also approve of the fact that they have taken the fort and gone with a more black, if I show it on this one, they take a more black markings approach to the adamant with the mirror universe variant. Whereas with the prime yourselves, it has got more the federation's edge towards having blue markings. Well, red pinstriping and blue. I've always found that a bit odd. Either way, it works for me. Now, it's also very good to say that you can get quite a few customization options with this ship thanks to the raw variations you get, especially having so many refit choices. As a result, you will find some incredible variations of ships popping out of this. Some of them looking amazing, some of them looking somewhat questionable. I think my personal favourite one I've heard of and seen so far over on a Facebook page, ironically, was uh... Taxi! <laughs> this one. Oh, I couldn't help but find that one funny. Awkwardly works for me. Probably shouldn't work for me, but... Hey, we're each allowed to have our own tastes. Now. Enough said, shall we? Let's actually get to... The real detailing. You know... I've always imagined that the Bridge of the Defiant was here on the nose. But um, with two pairs of torpedo launchers right there, I highly doubt it in this one's case. <laughs> Is it back here? It's got some windows running along the sides here. It's... You see this Defiant actually has quite a few decks to it. One, two... At least another two in that section. Third one there. Hmm. Four, five, six, seven? Is it seven decks? I don't know. I hesitate to guess. But there are a couple of things I want to show first before we really go into the beauty and details of this. Because I'm sure some of you would be interested to see it. So. I've got to let her fly forwards and pick a fight. Don't mind me. It shouldn't take too long. I think I went pretty quickly into doing this. Ah, there we go. The first things first. These are the experimental weapons fired by this vessel. The experimental weapon is essentially firing six quantum torpedoes that target one specific foe and batters the living hell out of it. The nice thing about these, this experimental weapon, should I say, is the fact that it actually takes on the look of the quantum torpedoes seen in Deep Space Nine. At least one of the visuals you see for them. 
definitely my preferred visual. I love how it looks like you have, you've literally fired stars at the enemy. It's a very beautiful looking weapon. Whoop! Oh god, I've lost him. I didn't mean to do that. Where Where is that Jem'Hadar vessel? Ah, there he is. Considering that's only 10 kilometers, that's quite the look in distance, isn't it? Well... Quite an interesting impact as well. Ah, and there's the other weapons I wanted to show you. Now, as you can see, normally when you fire the quad weapons, the bolts are quite far apart. You fire it on things like the Akira, on the Defiant, the Steam Runner even, and the, you could cl clearly see the four bolts being fired. Now in this one's case, you can still see the four bolts, but I really like the visual that this ship gains from it. These are the Agony Quad phases you get with the vessel. And the four bolts are spread, but two quite close together making a very nice impression obviously firing from A and B on either side oops in case they're not visible enough for you guys ah there you go you can see both together on this side now yes yes it's just what we're looking for now if you'll give me just two seconds While this uh, ship wraps things up. Oops. Nicely done, Adamant. Nicely done. Oops. Should come to a stop. Now I'm gonna go in reverse, aren't I? Yes, of course I am. Here we are. And the last thing to show you guys is its cloak. It's the typical Federation cloak, but just in case you're curious as to how it looks, because they have refined the visual, and therefore I do believe it's worth taking a look at. Especially on the ship to originally show Federation using cloak. must say I'm very happy with it. Now then, with those visuals shown, and yes, I forgot to show what this console looks like. Oh, it's not a big deal. Let's get into the real details here, because there is so much to look at. For something so small, there is so much to look at. The main things I want to start off with is its basic profiles, such as sleek and slender profile that also looks sort of beefed up it definitely looks more beefed up on the Defiant itself it looks like more of a warship than the Defiant did this in comparison the Defiant now feels more like a scout ship that's insulted so that's insulted me Ugh. the hell is the Defiant a scout ship Defiant is a lethal weapon it's a weapon of mass destruction, do not get in its way. But, this ship is, like I said, probably the only ship that Cryptic has designed in the Defiant line that to me, actually improves on the visual aesthetic, massively even. They went for a trident look and It's safe to say the artist behind this ship is an absolute genius. Just looking at the profile down, he's got he's gotten exactly what he went for. You have the beautiful trident impression on top of the very nice 
defiant Phil. Plus, he's reinforced and grown on aesthetics that were actually always there in the Defiant, but not really easy to see. For example, the head of the ship. It's always been able to separate and launch off. Now, this is sort of the escape module of the Defiant class, though there has been some theories that that is where all the quantum torpedo warheads are and that that was the last ditch result. The ship's probably going down but we could take the enemy with us, launch the warhead module ahead and it collides into the enemy and explodes with all the quantum torpedoes the ship still had left. Actually, as far as I'm aware, what, this, what they call the stallions on this ship, the By coming close enough, I can basically go right to one of them. This segment of the ship here, that would be what launches out and launches forward with all the warhead modules. That technically is where the quantums come from. But not on this ship, they are now on this segment. So it would make sense that this module now looks more like it can be released and fired forwards. I actually massively ap approve of the docking segment scarf here. Hang on, I really need to get, um, give me a second. I need to know the name of the person who did this shit. Blast it. Unfortunately, I never got the answer to the question that I posted. I did try to find out exactly who all the designers were. Well. To whoever you was who designed this ship, you have constructed a masterpiece. Now. Other things I want to discuss in this ship. Um, oh God, it's too easy to get lost on this ship, but at the same time, I'm not necessarily going to view that as a bad thing. Because when I say lost, it's in the integral details that are hiding all over the ship. For example, a phaser strip right here, which makes a lot of sense. This ship shouldn't be armed with just its cannons. The phaser strip right here makes a lot of sense. I'm going to assume that's a plasma vent. Because I find it very hard to believe that's a phaser strip based on the um, aesthetic notices. But it's good to see that it's got some means of venting energy out of the nacelles in an interesting fashion. You've also got some vents up here on the side of the ships, which I think look great because starships would get really hot. You have to have ways of venting the heat out of them. Going to the underside, I am focusing on the weapons first because this is a warship. We have two phaser strips nicely mounted at the back with one at the front near the module of the head module. Again, two of those vent or grates. An interesting design at the back here that to me looks like it's supposed to be windows, but at the same time makes sense that they wouldn't be lit up. It's not like this ship is a galaxy class where you'll have an observation deck for the hangar bays. I hell would you? And it, to me, it makes sense that it's got a big hangar here near the impulse engines, I noticed. Or maybe you could say that's the hangar door at the bottom of here. I don't know, it could be either or. This could be a massive heat vent at the back. It could be a case of they've decided not to actually have room for a hangar on this ship. I doubt it. There's definitely some way on this ship to release at least a runabout. At minimum runabout, if not a couple of, couple of uh, shuttles. Really would love to see a version of this ship designed to actually even have a hangar that could be deployed in combat. Can you imagine that? Again, we've already noted that there are quantum torpedo launchers at the front. A curiosity of mine though is... I don't really spot them on the aft. So has this ship got no quantum launchers at the back? Another thing I want to note on is the actual mounting segment for the actual impulse engines themselves. 
What it looks like is you've got two segments here, nicely pointed by arrows, that are designed to be extracted. So it makes the ship feel more functional. It's like these could be a routine part of the system's impulse manifold that has to be replaced. And when it goes in the dock, these are extracted out, and new ones are plugged in, and the ship can leave again. Similar to what we're seeing down here near the warp coils on warp plasma vent, maybe. You got another two very similar ideas of a plug, remove, and put in the new segment. Or maybe it's just an access hatch. To make things even better, this ship's the spoiler, or the if we use the car terms, the duck tail on the back of this ship really makes me feel like Paris had something to do with it. Like Tom Paris saw it being developed, he's like, "Can I, can I have a bit of an input? Give it a spoiler oh, and give it some fins too." Hello, Finn. Um, hang on. Where's it gone? Hello, Finn. <laughs> I definitely get the sense that Paris has had something to do with this ship. He's had his little input. Now, there was at one point, I honestly thought looking around this ship for this review, that this was the warp core, and this would be the warp ejection point. Having it towards the front of the ship, well, it would both make sense and not make sense. It's an interesting spot to have it, considering the front of the ship would be taking the most of the impacts, the way these ships function. It would make a change from it normally being closer to the rear, then again, Galaxy Class is actually in the middle of the ship. I can see where on the back of this ship you could say the warp core is supposed to be. You could even say it's directly underneath here, with the sensor platform. But the reason I am... Um, I'd either say this is a docking ring or the warp core point itself, purely because it's connected to this front head module and if it's a last ditch, last resort to launch off the module and fire it at the enemy, knowing your ship is probably lost and not escaping the fight anyway, well, if your warp systems are down and you can't go to warp and your ship's about to go boom anyway, you might as well take the warp core all of the torpedo ammunition and just launch it all at the enemy. You might as well. It'll be one massive explosion, probably wipe you out, and most certainly it's going to wipe out the enemy should you have gotten it close enough to them. I could see it happening, especially with a Terran vessel. I mean, to be honest, with a Terran vessel, I could see the ramming speed. Uh, Oh, was that supposed to be a nod at a wolf? Perhaps today is a good day to die. Run and speed! Yeah, okay, wolf. Crazy bugger. Now, away from talking about stuff like that, weapons and way this ship could fight, let's talk about specifically the warp system itself. Now, like I said, possibly the warp core could be at the front here. Possibly. That would mean the power systems are fed towards the back, probably in a fork motion, as well as towards the front with the deflector. Perhaps that is why you're seeing more vents as we come around the side of the ship. It could integrate in quite well, it's probably why there's massive vents on the sides of the nacelles themselves, and even the very front here, which I think is a great idea. The Bassar Collector is in a brilliant spot which allows it to easily gather the necessary fuel while simultaneously be well and truly protected. As you can see from a basic side on, it's actually completely shrouded by the armor of the ship. So it still functions optimally, but as well at the same time, it's nicely protected. Though having the cannons fire directly across the Bassards kind of gives me an air of um, risk, but then again, I guess that's kind of what the Defiant was all about. If there's one big thing I want to say, it's I absolutely love the design of these, uh, these nacelles. 
especially the sort of samurai armor, shoulder armor plate design that you've got on the very edge trim here. Really think that makes this ship feel more like a warrior than a fighter. A ship that fights with honor. In the mirror universe, that's kind of funny. From that, let's talk about deflector system. Now, the deflector is a beautiful design. I really love the detail that goes into it. Questionable that it is so damn similar to um, the warp coils, but maybe you could just say that the warp coils have got the same shrouded shielding as the deflector is using, because both have to emit radiation. The warp coils emit, are supposed to emit to each other. Um, go into that in a minute <clears throat> and the deflector emits forwards and creates the sort of it doesn't create the warp bubble a lot of people make that mistake it doesn't create the bubble itself but it does create a sort of forward half bubble or cone that is designed to push dangerous debris away from the ship hence deflector it deflects so Having a similar aesthetic look, although I it, I question it a bit, it does at the same time make sense. And having all these vein parts to the it actually gives me an idea that it can directionally augment where it's pushing out from. Which again makes it feel more active and more alive. Something that a lot of deflectors I've seen don't actually give me the feel of. Now... To the back. Obviously, there's no direct line of sight. There is, if you think about it, it's got the same direct line of sight as you would say on a Ferengi decor. But on a Ferengi decor, you actually have visible warp coils to see each other. You don't have that on the ship. In fact, you have areas of livable section of hull including windows all there. So, hear me out. This is a four nacelle vessel. Okay, okay, okay. I'm actually taking inspiration from things that, what we have seen with, I think it was the Galaxy class, it might have been on the Sovereign, where you see, instead of Walk coils specifically, you see a pair of coils running right next to each other. Now, technically, the reason they say that you have to have two walk nacelles or four walk nacelles is because it has to work in pairs. Um, okay, can we argue this factor then and say that it's not so much that you need pairs of nacelles? but pairs of coils. Therefore, technically, three nacelles would work if one of the nacelles has a pair of coils in it. And to me, that's how I'm going to argue this working. You've got pairs of coils running through the nacelles of the ship and they actually create the bubbles to each other. That bubble is then able to expand because it's essentially radiation and particles around the vessel itself out of the vents that you see exposed and that's why it's got vents on the top and all that do you agree with my argument for it or do you say no it just simply doesn't have line of sight sometimes i like to debate this kind of thing and just see what other people think now towards the back we've got our communication platforms I love these little windows here because it makes me feel like behind the bridge a lot is going on. You've probably got the basic crew quarters are back here. Some tactical stations. Bearing in mind this ship isn't meant for a long time living in and research and development and all that. So I'm not gonna say there's massive research platform massive research rooms and auditoriums and holodecks. No, in my opinion, you've got back here, you've got all the need for a ship designed to go into action, get the job done, and go back. 
You got your sensor rooms, your tactical rooms, your long range detection systems. Cloaking device. Would be interesting to know what on this ship actually is the cloaking device. And honestly, I'm going to stop airing there because uh, if I start to over assess this ship, I take away from its beauty. One last thing though, a little nod that I want to acknowledge. A copper just here of the deflector. Now I can't remember why that exists on certain ships, but I love the fact that it is now followed forwards properly into this ship. I do feel like that is a very nice touch and I would like to see more of this sort of thing cropping up on ships because I don't know why but to me it just makes this ship feel more realistic, more active. Same as I like seeing vents, same as I like seeing locking points, same as I like seeing hatches. She's a beauty. Now guys, vanity shield time. Let's go. Okay, now that we've got no interruptions, don't mind me. Um, yeah, ignore the random power settings and that. It was more so I didn't take too much damage while trying to show off those things. <sighs> Do I have them all on me? I'm going to be very upset if I don't. I think I've got all the important ones on me, so we'll be happy with that, shall we? First up, Alliance. Ooh. Now, we'll see. Alliance kind of looks good on this ship. And I'm not normally one to say that. I have to say, I'm a bit of a fan of the adamant. <sighs> Even if its nose is right in our face! <laughs> Next up, we have the Bayol. Hmm. Oops, let's uh, cook up the ship and nose a little bit. This really works for the ship. Gives me a sort of a stealth feel to it. <laughs> Call it the ISS Shadow in that case. Borg Vanity Shield. Hmm. Doesn't look quite as good. If I'm honest, I feel like this cooperative vanity shield, although it is actually not that old of a vanity shield is directly ripped from what they use for cooperative ships and that has been about a while which would actually make the um shielding aesthetic relatively old which probably adds to its um older feel discovery refit no i just that just looks really bad. Looks like the ship has been mistreated and unloved for a very long time and has resulted in basically way too much wear and tear. Also takes away from one of the best feeling parts of the ship. Discovery Vanity Shield. Well, it feels a lot newer. I'm kind of okay with the feel of it. It's just I'm not really keen on brown holes or sandy holes. I do prefer more silver greys, blacks. Not too bad, I guess, though. 
Emerald Chain Juggernaut. Because this is the same problem as the uh, refit. Because, um, does anyone else see it? Emerald Chain Juggernaut is literally just a darker version of... I'm so miffed at that. I mean, it's a little bit too close to, and I think I'll skip to it for the sake of it, being the trash canny one. Just the trash canny one is so damn old, it looks horrendous. That is, it looks like it's growing moss. Does anyone else feel like this ship is growing moss on it? Welcome to the trash can. Don't ever use the Breen vanity shield. Dielectric, by the way. Okay, let's save it again. Imperial, Imperial Emperor's vanity shield. You've got to love autistic stuttering, I swear. Now see, that's what I call pulling it back. And I did find it funny to think that D Discovery completely forgot that in the Mirror Universe there were more markings than simply a colour aesthetic change in an emblem. So... Yeah, as much as I like the look of this, I am actually going to um, be a bit judgmental here. If Cryptic, if Cryptic can get visual aesthetics right, Discovery, why do you find it so hard? I'm just saying. You have some brilliantly good designs, Discovery, but... Simultaneously, you make some really strange errors. Well, errors in continuity. But then again, that's what a lot of people complain about Discovery app. You could argue with some of these continuity errors. Blue nacelles, blue facades. Yeah, it, it's fine to do that because that's Andorian technology. See how I argue it? <laughs> Peculiarly vanity shield. Like I'll argue with this. This is much further. This ship is what actually come back in time to this time period. It's like ironically in its own time period now. Well, it's 2,500 years old, but ironically somehow ended up back in... It, the period when it was originally constructed. There you go. Why is it all rusty and beaten when in space it technically wouldn't corrode like that? Well, it ended up in a nebula which had a re weird corroding effect on the ships. That's why all Fakiri ships have this weird erosion effect on them. It's got nothing to do with the pit type of species they are. It's just they now live inside a nebula half the time that erodes the outer holes and painting of the ships. It's not actually corroded, it just looks like it is. Yeah! Ferengi! I can see the Ferengi loving it. Loving this ship! Pseudo! What have I told you about post painting latinum on the outer plates of the hull? It's very expensive to do that, especially with you damn Ferengi. Oh wait. Latinum isn't actually gold, is it? Oh, if anyone gets what I'm referencing to there. <laughs> oh. No, this feels this feels right. It feels like the thing you've done to this ship, what they do with their latinum. Encase it in a less valuable material. Because you must protect the valuable. And I'm not gonna lie, this actually looks really good. I wouldn't mind something that sort of gives this gold, the latinum elements to the ship, but has a silver where the peach or the pinky peach is. Silver or grey. I think that would look really, really good. Cryptic, could you do that? Please? Please? 
Future Ferengi hold tight. Do it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, you've got my mind racing now. This is the problem when you get such a good ship like the Adamant. It gets my mind, the creative side of my mind going. I, wow. Oh, wow. That looks brilliant. Which I wasn't expecting. I was expecting to really hate this on this ship. My mind was going like, you will not like the Herc because of the beetle look and it's just not going to suit the look of the ship. But it strangely does. In an odd way. Well, I think more if the ship was reversed. You know, if it was, if it flew backwards, it would feel better on the ship. But because of the way it does fly forwards, because of the trident point, it doesn't quite work. There's an air of possibility there. Kelvin divergence, wash out. Oh my word. I, I'm skipping around this really quickly, so you might want to pause it to get a better look because I, I don't want to look at this very long. I, I need that off. I need that off my screen. I could see it. I could see it. Hey, if this ship was coming to my rescue. In the mirror universe, I would cry and pray for a quick death. In our universe, in this universe, I would probably be like, Well, I'm saved. Ain't nothing stopping that ship. The difference between the prime universe and the mirror. Platinum Vanity Shield. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't have mentioned that last one was the Medical Vanity Shield. Sorry. I've been told off before for not saying what the shields are. See, this is the one that tells me that if you change the black plating to gold, it would look good. And that's coming from someone who doesn't actually like gold. I only use gold it when, gold when it comes to certain aesthetic going for certain aesthetic visuals. Preferably, I like this. Silver and black. That's my preference. Or silver and grey. That's another preference of mine. This, this look on the ship, though, really, I really do like this look. I think this is my favourite so far. By a long way. It's my favourite so far. If my choice, if it was my choice for a hold type, would be this one. Section thirty-one. Oh, you don't let me down. It did not let me down. Oh, it did not let me down. Perfect. Perfect. New favourite, straight off the bat, like Platinum, you just gained favourite spot, nah, get lost. <laughs> Section 31, that looks really nice, it actually looks better than by all. Which is odd coming for me, because normally I prefer by all. By all! Zenkefi, not expecting this to look good at all. Expecting it to look really, really bad on it. Mm. Yeah, not a fan at all of that. It looks like it looks like it's um It looks like the hull is been made out of some plastic mold. And I don't mean a good plastic mold, I mean one that is full of imperfections. They've poured the plastic into it, pulled it pop out and gone here you go. 
it looks dreadful. Jat Vash, bring it back for us. Come on. Oh, that's not a bad look. That is genuinely not a bad look. I was joking. actually like that. Damn it, Jatvash. Damn. You don't look that good under Defiant. Time to assimilate. Assimilate 1E, assimilate 2E, assimilate 3. So... Yeah, that's about what you'd expect in this bottle. Not too much sim um, visible simulation around the ship, other than the additional components that I added on. The impulse piece fits really well, doesn't feel out of place. However, the warp and cell piece feels majorly out of place. Probably rotate it 90 degrees, well, looking at it this way. Rotate it 90 degrees to 3 o'clock and then place it on the side of the nacelle would have looked a lot, a lot better. A lot, mostly because of the shape of it. But hey, sometimes you think of it, sometimes you don't. You can't expect Cryptic to catch everything. Peugeot and Defence. Deflector looks good. The rest of it feels like it's been beaten up a bit too much. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. A warship is going to go through the paces and will take quite a few knocks, but I'm sure it'll come out better than that. Hmm. Next up, we go counter command. Hmm. I feel that would work better if you gave the black points um, a paint job that feel filled close to the colour of that blue, if not the same as that black blue. Otherwise, it looks good. Or go for a whole type that gives a different mark into that. Maybe make that white. If it was white, it'd probably look better. Delta Alliance Unimatrix. I'm not sure how this is going to go. Mm. What was I saying about the gold beforehand? But, um... Yeah, I knew it would be. Nope. Look like... Oh my word. Deflectors bad. Bassar collectors aren't perfect. There's not even a single good thing to say about the back there. The gold trimming with the grey does look pretty nice, but... Yeah, this vanity shield needs a major overhaul. And I really do mean a major one. Next up, Dyson Regenerative. That is so white, it's unreal. Looks pretty good in the centre pod. So this is the upper bridge actually. This whole thing looks pretty good like this. She's looking very good, actually. 
Ironically, I've just... It's just cute to me. She's... That's... It's, oh, sorry. Next one is the Iconian Resistance. What's just cute to me, she's got a lot of this familiar feel to her, as you get with the pilot escorts. It's only just clicked to me, that one. Defector looks alright. However, she can't say the same about the patterns on the ship. I mean, again, the sensor pod look. The sensor pod at the bottom keeps looking really good with any of these round aesthetics, but the rest of it just looks really bad. Same for the module on the top where I think the bridge is. <sighs> Lucari. Well, I don't feel like the bridge is there anymore. <laughs> Hmm. I kind of like the trim there, that strong glowing trim. Makes the, sh makes the ship feel sort of organic and kind of fish-like, ironically. Next up, Mako Resilient. Oh, we all saw where that was going. It doesn't have quite the same effect on those um, points. Got it on in the cells. I don't know, it doesn't really add anything to the ship in my personal opinion. It kind of subtracts from the ship, if I'm more honest. And that's not always a good thing. Nakura. The Folians. The original version of that deflector <laughs> um, pattern. I never even thought about that until I just saw it. It's not a bad look, but it's not great. I've just noticed where the walk coil aesthetic has been put though. Anyone else notice it? Prevailing! Oh, it's just no. Immediately, the way that sinks up in the plates here with the side here. No. And by the way, there you go. Cent well, the central pod right in the middle is actually got, for the blue glowing on it, what would normally be the blue glowing for the warp coils. Interesting. And yes, what should be the walk coils is using deflectors visual. If it wasn't for that little bit there, I would have said this actually looks pretty good, but it's just that paddling across the top kind of breaks it for me. In a harsh way. Roman Advanced Prototype. I had to lift them to make sure that oh, I was looking at that light. Yeah, that's green. Hmm. I'm not really sure what I think of that one. Feels like it would work better if it wasn't on the mirror with the mirror patterns. Temple. Ooh. And that doesn't quite feel right to me. It's like someone has spilt a whole ton of oil on the bottom and the aft of the ship. No, I don't like that. Terran Task Force, come on, bring it back, yes, perfect, actually kind of like the grilling effect on the front here, yeah, that works brilliantly for me, and the underside looks great, 
It's a shame about the rounding inside the wall. Um, you've got the um, Delta Alliance Unimatrix problem. You're not filling out the uh, glowing element area and for the wall coils, and I don't like that. That's annoying. That's really annoying. And considering it doesn't look too bad in the front reflector, but you look at that a lot. And if I'm going to keep spotting those, I won't like it. Ooh, that went from working really well, because that all looks great, to mm, problem. Already looked at the um, trash can, so let's go to Jem'Hadar. Now, older visual aside, doesn't look too bad, actually. But seriously, this needs an update, too. It looks really nice, and I would love to use it, but it definitely needs a visual update. Finally, the one that seems like it doesn't need one. Riemann Advanced Prototype, the Marmite. And I say it doesn't need one because it's got a nice shimmer and shine to it. Um, interesting blackout point. Now, ordinarily, I'd probably have said that that's way too much hexagon patterning on the bottom there, but against everything that surrounds it, I don't feel like it is too much. The back is fine, the top is perfect. This is my third favourite, and I do really, really like the way that looks. Nice. Done a good job again, Cryptic. However, all vanities aside, I definitely feel like this is the best look. Because it's just beautiful. With that being said, Final score, visually, and on the visual review. I've got to, got to say, got to give it a 10 out of 10. She is absolutely gorgeous. A brilliant update in visual against previous Defiant designs. Definitely better than everything Cryptic has done up to this point. And the first, I would say, that improves upon the original Defiant look. I hesitate to say she looks better than the Defiant, but she's definitely a challenge to it. Now, I would love to hear your guys' view on this ship. Love to hear what if you're flying her or not. Are you enjoying how powerful she is? Because I'll tell you something now. I am. <laughs> I love just how much this ship can do in battle. And I love flying with her because she looks so good. Guys, thank you for watching to the very end of this video. It means the world. And can I also say a huge thank you to the people credited on screen right now. Our patrons, our donators, our Twitch subscribers, and our YouTube members for the generosity and support they show this channel. It's made such a big difference over time, and it actually helps to make these videos possible. Because Lord have mercy, I wouldn't be able to afford to do the lockbox and the promos without your support. <laughs> Can I also say to you guys that if you're new to the channel, and wish to see future ones, then consider joining the crew by ringing the notification bell and hitting that subscribe. But, until the next one, Sickness. With all that being said, live long and prosper. And long live the Empire. Ciao for now.